Welcome back. Episode 25 of the Rex Chapman Show with super cool Josh Hopkins. What's up, my what's up, my guy? All good things. All Chilling. good things, man. Look at that beard. Oh yeah, huh? That's man style, isn't it? Uh-huh. That's mm-hmm. that's a that's a purdy one. Thank you. That's Thank a purdy one. Been going Party for a little while. As they say around here in Kentucky, that's a good one. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Speaking of that, a good you know you know what you know I've grown it. No. Good news. What? I'm doing a I'm shooting a western. I do know that. And I'm so excited. Yeah. I'm glad yeah. you brought it up. You gotta have a dude, you gotta have a good beard. Oh, you get there ready on get, the plains a little You're longer. actually really getting ready to get back on the saddle. <laughs> Literally. Literally. hmm Oh, I love it. I can't I've been wait. Taking lessons. Right. Back riding lessons. You know, I hadn't been on horse since I was a kid. It is, uh, I'm way more scared now. Is it like riding a bike? (laughs) No, no, it isn't. It's a a funny visual to see a big paddock and me in there on a horse and then three (laughs) nine-year-old girls in there also on horses and their parents there going, what are you, what what is, why they see Uh, you? Yeah, (laughs) exactly. It's a good visual. You have an old man mm-hmm. and a beard on a horse with the three mm-hmm. three young girls. Yeah, yeah. creepy old man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, I'm thrilled to hear it, actually. Congrats. Me too. Uh, me too. Episode 25, we, which is Vince Carter. Who mm-hmm. else? Doc 25. Rivers. Doc Rivers. Doc Mark Rivers. Price. Mark Price. Yeah. <laughs> Rest in peace, Jerome Kersey. Oh, wow. Back in the Good. day. Yeah. Um, that was a great call. Yeah, you know, you know, we've got a good guest today, uh, uh, somebody that I really, really like. We've got Jeff Shepard coming on the show mm-hmm. today, and he's one of, for people that don't know, he's a, a Kentucky basketball legend, uh, one of my good good buddies, younger, didn't play with him in college, but uh, he went on, won two titles at the University of Kentucky, and he has a son who's one of the top guards in the in the country, and when I say that, a legit top guard in the country uh, going into his junior year. So we get to talk to Shep in a little while. Yeah, that's, that's, that's great. And people, I mean, if you're not in Kentucky, you can't even understand uh, the legend that he is most outstanding player in the NCAA tournament. And then you can't understand the fervor in the state of Kentucky about his son. And uh, he got an offer from Cal and it, I mean, it's at an all time pitch. So this is going to be a lot of fun to hear about <laughs> a lot of things. Jeff I know. He's being recruited by everyone under the sun. So, I, and, and Jeff's one of the, you'll see, uh, I don't know if you've spent, have you spent much time around Jeff? Josh? Yeah. One of the finest, one of the finest people you'll, you'll ever meet. Just uh, another That's guy that, that'll make us feel feel bad about ourselves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the theme. Let's just change that to show that the show, the okay. show name. Okay. No. But with Rex Chapman show with Josh Hopkins and those two are, are dicks and everyone. Else <laughs> <is> cool. <laughs> exactly. Show, sponsored uh, by. <laughs> hey, did you read anything while oh, we, were, we were gone? Had some time this time. I did, yeah. and I actually didn't read anything the whole time. So no, the whole time I, didn't. I, mean, I had yeah, I took advantage of the time, and I, I didn't read anything, but I oh. watched TV. Yeah. Took advantage, you know, so no, that's that's been book club. It has been book club. Um, I want to switch gears for one second and talk about something that's kind of sad on my mind right now, and that is the retirement of one of my favorite NBA basketball players, J.J. Redick. Our good buddy, J.J. Redick, yeah. we've had on the pod, uh, put out his statement a few days ago about his retirement. And uh, kind of caught me off guard, I guess, thinking back. It's about that time for J.J. But, uh, yeah, what a career, man. And he started out, well, as Kentuckians, we just, we just naturally hate anybody from Duke. Um, but I, to be a, a guy at Duke who takes all the shots, like, I don't mean basketball shots, who's, who's out there in the, in the bullseye all the time, right? you got to want that. And the thing that I think I love most about JJ is he relished it. 
he would go into arenas that he knew they were going to be nasty and yelling and screaming and possibly spitting and throwing and all that. And he loved it. He loved every second of it. And I don't know if you saw his uh, five minute long uh, social media post yesterday. Right. right. It's obvious that JJ is going to go on and do even bigger and better things He's already behind started. the microphone uh, as we go forward. But man, what a career. Yeah. Um, it, it actually, if, if people do like him and, and want to think about it, you should go back to that pod. Yeah. He talks about, you know, being the guy at Duke that everyone hates talks yeah. about the long line of them. He talks about specific incidences yeah. that happened like on the road and what people mm-hmm. said and did. And it was interesting. You know, you could, he knew the writing was on the wall for him, maybe another season. Uh, but you could hear in his voice, he was uh, resigned to it, you know, and maybe he was ready to not have to do his routine who he, that he does so intricately. Yeah. Maybe it was time to take a break and and really uh, center on the family and, and his next career and to see him do it. Wasn't really a surprise, but you're right. It, it, it makes you sad just to watch the NBA next year and never to oh, see JJ Raddick. That's I know. That hadn't happened in 15 years. I know. Crazy. Well, let's uh, let's get into our guest. Uh, we're going to go from one great guy, JJ Reddick, to another great guy, Jeff Shepard. Uh, I'm excited for you to talk to Chef. Two-time NCAA champ, 1998 NCAA tournament, most outstanding player, Georgia State Mr. Basketball, and one of the best guys to ever come through the University of Kentucky basketball program, we have Jeffrey Kyle Shepard. <laughs> yes. Welcome, Shep. Nobody knows my middle name. You just released that to the world. <laughs> <laughs> oh man how you doing buddy hey i'm doing great you can add a couple of more things to my resume uh absolute you know huge rex chapman fan my whole <laughs> life uh had if if the threads would still have kind of been there i would have still had my charlotte hornets rex chapman <laughs> shirt that i could have worn today <laughs> so uh you're my guy man i I would have, hey, quick story to kick things off. This is a good one, okay? Can I can I start off with a yes, pretty good may. story? Of course. Please do. Talk about me, please. So, so, <laughs> <laughs> so I show up on campus. I got all kinds of stories. All kinds of memories are being I'm flooded with them. But I'll start with this one. So Bill Kitely, right? I mean, just favorite uh, of all time. Mr. Uh, Wildcat. Mr. Wildcat. Longtime Kentucky uh, equipment manager and – Beloved. Grandfather, though, it's all. Absolutely. Yeah. So many titles that he has. So I show up on campus, and he's like, boy, what number do you want to wear? I said, Mr. Kitely, number three. Rex Chapman's my guy award in high school. Can I have number three? He's like, um, no, it's taken. Chris Harrison has number three. And I'm saying, well, how about number four? Uh, no, number four is taking uh, Rodney Dent is wearing number four this year. I say, uh, I'll take five. I'll take five. Uh, no, Travis Ford's got five, uh, Jeff. And I say, uh, okay, well, six, seven, eight, nine, can't have those numbers in college. Uh, I'll take 10. I'll take number 10. Andre Riddick, uh, he, Riddick's got 10. Uh, I said, uh, 11. He said, well, you know, 11 is actually hanging in the rafters right now. And we just kind of put it up there. That's Sean Woods, and uh, I said, all right, fine, Mr. Kiteley, that's fine. I'll take 12. 12 is Roderick Rhodes. Uh, I wasn't messing with 13, so I skipped right over 13. I said, I'll take 14. He said, uh, Jeff Brasso's got number 14. <laughs> I said, how about 15? I'll take 15. He said, boy, you can have number 15. Yeah, <laughs> no. Nice. So I, I wanted three, had to skip all the way to 15, but, you know. Okay. It worked. Uh, it worked for you. That's amazing. I hope I made you proud, buddy. I hope I made yes, you proud. Yes, you did, man. I didn't. I would I love no to idea. see you in three. I would have loved it. Now, <laughs> now, your son Reed. We'll get into him more later. But Reed, does Reed still wear three? Reed's got three. Reed's got man, three. That yeah. warms my heart. You know, uh, Josh. I don't know if I'm sure I sent it to you about 
oh man, it's got to be four or five years ago. <laughs> Jeff sh- sent me a, a video and Reed was in middle school. He wasn't dunking the ball or anything like that yet, but sent me a video of Reed doing the old behind the back, dunking it backwards thing on a low goal, uh-huh. but to do it just perfect, just effortless. <laughs> and he's a, he's going to be a great player. I want to talk about him more later, but um, man, I'm just, uh, I'm flooded with, with uh, emotions when I talk every time I talk to you, Chef, because I was, I, I hope I let you know when you were here, I was your biggest fan oh, and, man. and knew how, you know, I think everybody ultimately got to see it your, your senior year. You know, it just kind of that whole season was sort of magical and it kind of came together like like it should have for you. But I don't think people really got to see, you know, because you played on great, great high or college basketball teams, championship teams. And a lot of times those guys were stacked with lottery players. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was just happy to see because I knew how hard you worked and you had all of the all of the talent. And then, you know, just the the relationship that we were able to build. Uh, I hope that you knew that I was your biggest fan. I did. And, and it meant so much. You know, you, you, you get on campus. You remember how it is. You don't know how the current guys are going to accept you. And then, you know, thankfully, during the, the mid uh, 90s, we had incredible talent, but then we also had a, just an, a, an NBA family with you and Sky and Mashburn and, you know, so many pros that would just come back and, and play. And so not only am I, I getting a taste of, you know, Kentucky ball and, and now here comes Rex in the gym. I'm like, oh, my goodness, here come – and, and you, you really don't know what to say. And, you know, and then for you to just embrace me right away, man, it's just like empowerment at, at a whole nother level. And um, I'm glad know, to hear that because, it, you know, guys did that to me. You know, Ed Davender and James Blackman did that to me when I came in. And I know how it felt. You know, you you want to fit in, but you're also trying to show. And I, Josh, I'll let you talk in a minute or maybe I won't. But uh, yeah, I like to see one, this go back and forth. One, one of my first fav- and one of my favorite uh, Shep stories is that it was one of his first days on campus. And I'm it could have been the first day. And uh, for whatever reason, we ended up not playing that day. And there was only ended up being like three or four people in the gym. Well, the three people left in the gym were myself, Mash and Jeff and so we decided we were going to just play, you know, what, what was it called? 11 at the time or one on continuous one on one. one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm in the NBA. Uh, Mash is in the NBA and Shep hasn't even hasn't even had a practice at Kentucky yet. He's just in straight out of high school. And <laughs> it's like the, you know, we haven't played five minutes and Jeff, Jeff has, mash guarding him like at the uh, top of the key and he dribbled left and he threw it up off the backboard and mash turned around and Jeff went in and dunked the shit out of him. <laughs> and, and, and I started cracking up laughing. Mash started cracking up laughing and we were like, Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Now we know he's got that tool in his bag. <laughs> I know it's crazy. I'm sitting here with two of the the first ballot white boy leapers of all time. <laughs> I mean, both of you guys who just and and I would have I would have given my left leg. It wouldn't have worked. It's just metaphorically. <laughs> but to be able to do that, just nothing. And I was like, a, I hit foam. But I would have done anything. And here both of you are. Is it is it because I had too much hair? Probably. Is that why? Yeah. Because yeah. it it's still. You guys are, it was weighing you down before we knew it. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, go ahead, right. fellas. Go. Sorry. So no. a, a little later in the summer, um, I, we're in a pickup game. Actually, some guys showed up. So we're in a pickup game. And this was one of my first memories of pickup games. We're playing in the old alumni gym. Hot. So you know, they played in the hot. Oh, my gosh. So hot. So – the old alumni gym was where the guys played way back in the day, even yeah. before they played at Memorial Coliseum, right? right? 
So, I mean, number one, just really cool to be in there. Uh, well, not temperatures, 105 yeah. degrees in there. But so I, I'm back pedaling like two on one fast break. Rex has got the ball. Kenny Skywalker's on the other side. I'm like, okay, well, what am I going to do here? <laughs> so I'm back pedaling, lost, not knowing what I'm doing. Rex throws Kenny a lob. And stupid me goes up to like try to jump and block this lob. Now this is Kenny like fresh off yeah. the contest, like double windmills and cuffing the ball and all that. I challenge it. Some for some reason he misses the dunk. I have no idea. I probably fouled him. Probably bad pass. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, first of all, what were you doing passing? Well, wow, I'm right. <laughs> that was your guy though. That was your guy. <laughs> and and like Rex and Kenny are skins. I'm shirts. And and like after the play, I'm kind of walking down to get set up for the next check ball. And I'm like, man, something hit my shoulder. And I look, and there's like Kenny's footprint on my shoulder. And I'm like, Okay, this this is how this goes here. We didn't run into much of that in Peachtree City, Georgia. You know, right. I was yeah. kind of above everybody. And now this guy's way above me. So Man. what great memories playing in those pickup games. I'd love to go back. Same. All right. I was, back, but I'd love same to play. I would too. I mean, it was so much fun. But I, I want to go back, Peachtree, okay. to growing up in Georgia. You know, uh, you've lived in Kentucky for a long time now. Mm -hmm. uh, made it your home. But you you were born and raised in Georgia, correct? Yes. And, you know, there's a lot of good schools in Georgia, from Georgia Tech to UGA to on and on. Um, was it just – was it Kentucky? Was it Rick Patino? What was it that, you know, just this – you knew this was where you wanted to be? Yeah. Um, well, I don't know if you see, I'm kind of going to do my best. You see like that piece of paper yeah. that I'm pointing at. Uh -huh. So that piece of paper right there says, when I grow up, I want to trade places with Larry Bird and play for the Boston Celtics. But first I want to go to the university of Kentucky playing the final four for the university of Kentucky. So that paper was written in the sixth grade. Now, what? it's what's crazy is it is like we're talking about like in the early 80s. So I'm born in 1964 or 1974. So we're talking early 80s. I mean, a few games are on TV. Yeah, right? not many on but the weekends. On the weekends, like I'm trying to catch Kentucky and Louisville playing like on CBS mm -hmm. and putting the cassette tape in and watching you try to dunk on, you know, person. Like over and over and over and over. And I'm like, okay, I can do that one day. Right. And, but like, that's it. Like, that's what I had. Right. I didn't have a quick YouTube, you know, videos of, of what you're doing and all that. So, but that was my dream. And for me, it was kind of like, my list was like Kentucky over here. And if they never called, then there was like another list of an actual recruitment for me. And it was kind of how it played out because wow. I was kind of going through and like Indiana was talking to me and I was going to Georgia and I was going to Florida and Vanderbilt. Eddie Fogler was at Vanderbilt at the time. And then all of a sudden, like Rick Pitino calls and Billy Donovan's an assistant at the time. And, and, you know, they're like, Hey, we got some interest. And I'm just like, Oh, you got to just say it. Just say do you, it. Do you remember when they came to see you? I do. I do. They, How did you uh, play? They, I, I played what, – what they, they originally saw me play. We had the old Nike ABCD camp yep. in Indianapolis. So they saw me play, but, you know, I, I was you like would, – I can imagine, Chef. You know what I'm saying? Like, gonna, gonna, yeah, yeah, you weren't going to dominate. Yeah, and they're yeah. like, can, can he shoot, you know? And I'm like, doesn't matter, man. We got to set five screens and get some cuts in here and like <laughs> – yeah. You know, it, you right. know, and I, I was like, reverse the ball, and like the the shot was up, and I'm like, okay. So they really didn't get to see me shoot a lot. They got to see me move and defend and play and jump and all that kind of good stuff. So when that was over, they came down to Peachtree City, and they were like, we just want to see you shoot. 
we just like so i went through a shooting workout and then we right had after, to have wowed them right then and there I then mean, they just said hey we want to offer you a scholarship yeah, and yeah. i was like okay let me think about it you know i was trying to be all cool <laughs> and, and billy donovan says this he's like okay we're recruiting two guys right now same position one of them is a kid that we like and we like you and whoever commits first i'm just going to give the scholarship to he said the other kid's name is ray allen and so i'm like Billy Donovan, like you totally blew that, right? You could have had Ray Allen and I could have gone to Georgia. You, you it's lucky you did leave and go to Knoxville, Florida, because when the Kentucky fans find out about that, like, oh, it's amazing. That is amazing. Yeah, yeah. So and I was like, I mean, you in. scooped it up. So I mean, Man, that's great. <laughs> That is so great. Chef, were you like, uh, I mean, I know how Josh and I both were. I, I assume you were. Uh, you know, what made you so driven it in sixth grade? You know, was it just whatever your parents put you in? You were just going to be absorbed in? What was it in you that, you know, because it takes people don't, I don't, I think a lot of people understand, but some don't that, you don't know, just don't show up at the University of Kentucky. And here you are. You've really worked at that since you've been seven, eight, nine, ten years old every day. What was it in you, uh, in you that that gave you sort of that drive? Yeah, great question. I don't know that I've ever really tackled that question. You know, the first thing that came come to my mind is that, you know, for us, basketball is a really fun game. Mm -hmm. Like, and if you have a, a little bit of God given ability, like we have then like all of a sudden, like, like you can go around a guy, even if it's not real mm -hmm. pretty, you can kind of get around the guy and you can get a layup and like, you can get two points and that's pretty cool. Right. And it makes you feel good about yourself and your team. Right. Yes. Yeah. Very much so. Very much so. And then as like Josh was saying, like, right, I can touch the phone. Right. Like, you know, and then you've got these guys that are doing these incredible things. You know, Michael Jordan is doing all of these incredible things. And you're like, I want to be like Mike. You know, I, do, I may not wear the Bulls uniform, but you know what? When I'm in the backyard, I can be him. Mm -hmm. And so you get a taste of that. And then it's just one step after the other. And then you, you get in a real game, you know, and yeah. then you just like you can you still remember that. Do you still remember that like early varsity, first early varsity experience that you had? I remember like checking in off the bench in a varsity game as a freshman, scared to death, big <laughs> uniform, doubled over, <laughs> doubled over shorts because they, you know, and getting the ball. And I remember like making a shot and running back down. The, I get goosebumps thinking about it right now. Like that was my biggest dream playing for the Apollo Eagles, make, make the varsity team. And I did it as a freshman. I, I remember start. Do you remember that for you? What that was? I do. It was, it was incredible. And uh, I, we had early in the season, uh, a road game and, and, and I got in the game and, and between my eighth grade year and my freshman year, I grew like four inches. Same. I, I kind of. I was ninth and tenth. Okay. Yeah. I grow into ninth grade, and I'm like six to maybe one forty. Could you like, dunk it? Maybe. So that was my first dunk in that game, oh, but it wasn't. It was as, came out as a freshman. It. Yeah, it was like out of fear. I think it was like <laughs> I got a steal and I got a breakaway, and I went up, and I was like. I'm I'm here. I'm I'm just gonna die. Of course, it wasn't like yeah, of boom, course, right? Like whoop, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but it was like, and then the whole bench goes crazy. And, and I, I bet it was two handed. What? It was definitely two handed. Yeah. It was. I, and think about that. That's so weird because most people normally will dunk it one handed before they can dunk it two handed. Yeah, but I just found myself there. I don't even know if we won the game. Like yeah. nothing else mattered. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Nothing else mattered. I got, but you get a taste of that. And now all of a sudden it was almost to a fault. Like if I could rewind and like 
put some of that effort that I was in, like jump, jump, dunk. Dang. Like I really need to learn how to dribble a little. I bit. need to learn how to do a crossover dribble yes. instead of going behind my back. Yes, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. If I could have had just a few hours of doing that. Yeah. And maybe learning to shoot just a little bit better. Maybe I wouldn't be wearing a suit right now. I'd no. be. You know, no, you would else. be. You, you, but, you'd be doing yeah. something. But you, you've <laughs> given it to Reed, though. Reed does it. Well, he he definitely, like, he, everything that I look back on and I was like, man, I was bad at this. I, I, I was not real good with my left hand. Like, Reed He's, is incredible with his left hand. I know. And, uh, you know, it's funny. Coaches are like, you know, yelling things from the stands and everything. They're like, make them go left. Make them left. I'm like, yes. Please, please do it. Make them go yeah. left. You know, I, I was watching it. And for people that don't know out there, Jeff has a son, Reed, who's going into his junior year, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. Class of 23. And he's one of the top, top basketball, high school basketball players in the country. Already has an offer from our Wildcats, I believe, right? Um, he's big time. And I, I do want to get into, um, he can be big time. I don't want to give that to him yet. Uh, he's, um, but a, a terrific young man to watch. And I just remember watching him last year and I didn't get to see him live, but they had a couple of games on, on TV. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I saw him play against Danny Johnson's son, who Ben, who, uh, ended up being Mr. Basketball mm -hmm. as a senior. And that's, this is a senior playing against your son, Reed, as a sophomore. Mm -hmm. And I watched that game. And really, Danny's son is just such a, you know, it's like he's a 25-year-old. You know, he doesn't wow you with anything, but he just plays like a grown man. Mm -hmm. And seeing him play against Reed was really fun because, you know, Reed, you could tell that's where Reed will be in two years. He, he played so well. There's so much – what I love to see is that, obviously, he's your son. He's playing in Kentucky. There's so much pressure on him to play well. And I know that he puts that pressure on himself to play well. And so when he does, I, I'm really excited and really happy for him as well as you guys because I know how hard he works at it. He, he has worked really hard. And – uh, it's crazy that we had an incredible little season going on last year. Of course, we, we live in Laurel County and, you know, we, we, we play in Southeastern and Eastern Kentucky and that's kind of our, our district and our region. And, and, and we were, man, we were rolling through the season. We, we were, we were undefeated coming into that Lexington Catholic event and the night before we play Lexington Catholic, we play Ashland, and they absolutely thump us. And we're like, oh, my gosh, where did this come from? Then we turn right around and play Lexington Catholic. They absolutely thump us. But it was really the best thing for us. You right. know? And I just hated it because, yeah. you know, I wanted Reed to really kind of, you know, it was, a, it was on television and, and a lot of people knew about it. And I was like, come on, little buddy, you know, you know, turn the corner and go get 50. And it was just, uh, it was, I gotta tell you, he, games, but he yeah, that, that's coming from a dad. I <laughs> watching him watching that game. I was, I couldn't have been more proud just cause he, he, he's like you in a lot of ways. He doesn't force it. You'd like him to force it a little bit more at times. And he, cause he, he tries to make every, every right play. I think he's, I, I don't know what it, I think he's a point guard. And especially in today's game, it's not, you don't really play the one and the two. Yeah. He's dynamic though. And uh, anyway, there's a good school over here at Kentucky. <laughs> you know, you know, it's uh it's interesting because you, as you talk about that, because here Reed has just been thrust into the spotlight mm -hmm. and he's, you know, he's just since a sophomore, he's going, it's going to be on when he goes around Kentucky, people know who he is everywhere as a young, young kid. And people are dying for him to go to Kentucky. So I think, you know, the person that would know, maybe the only person in the world that knows what he's going through and what that feels like is Rex. Mm -hmm. I mean, oh. it went through the, that same thing in the spotlight and then people wanting, do, Rex, do you have any advice for, I, for him now just to handle that? I hadn't really even thought about that just because I, I, I know, well, I, let me turn that around and throw it on Jeff. Jeff, how different is because you were a big damn deal in Peachtree, Georgia, growing up. How how much different 
and I know we're living in the social media world, Twitter and all that, but how much different do you feel like your experience is just with the fanfare and whatnot for Reed um, as it was for you? How, how much different is it? Do you sense it a lot? Yeah, the biggest thing is, it is. It, it's just so public. Everything is very, very public, and and you know what? It, it's okay. It's what makes Kentucky basketball uh, so special. And but when when you're from outside of the state, you know there's there's maybe some coverage. Even right now, you know there's you know Chris Livingston. I mean, we land you know Chris Livingston, wonderful recruit. We played against Chris earlier this year. You know, it was, it, it was a big deal, but it's like the Chris Livingston, you know, signing okay. is great. It's a big deal. And then like the bottom of the story, it's like, so wonder where Reed will go. You know I mean? It just, it's just right. always there. And all the time. And all the time. And that's okay. That That's, it's really okay. And, and what advice we as parents have been given Reed, and thankfully, these coaches, these coaches have been wonderful. Coach Cal, we've been talking to a lot of different coaches. You know, um, we're talk- talking to Tony Bennett over at Virginia. I own him. I own a Rick. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, um, a lot of different coaches. Chris Holtman was from Ohio State, was, was down last night at, at North Laurel talking to, to us and talking to Reed. Chris um, Mack. Chris Mack up at Louisville done a great job. He's he's had an incredible recruitment, and um, and then uh, we've been up to Indiana. Spent some time up uh, in Indiana as well. And the kind of the common theme, these coaches have done a great job telling Reed just enjoy being a junior in high school. Yeah, and and that's where our focus has been. And Reed's done a good job with that, right? Like he's like. All right, man, I, I'm running the Waffle House with the guys tonight. I'm like, yes, go and do your thing and have fun and, you know, don't do anything crazy and but but enjoy it. Like he's is pumped he, up. Is he like, eating up about getting to the state tournament? Is yes. He, that, he, cause I, and that's the really – and along those lines, Josh asked, if I the, – the thing that kept me sane in high school from age 15 on because it was just, you know, it's like what he's going through, I'm sure, just – Gyms are packed everywhere that, you know, uh, my teammates, my high school teammates who are still my best friends, you know, um, those guys just being immersed with those guys. And at some point I realized that around where he is now that, okay, look, this is going to be their highlight, you know, playing in Rupp arena in the state tournament, I'm going to go on and play wherever I'm going to play. And so looking back on these days now, you know, you, you know, the, the days with your, and Josh knows his best friends in in the world are his high school buddies. So I would say, you know, live those moments up. And, and I'm, I'm proud of him knowing that just how he's handled it so far. He's been uh, every, well, you guys do a great job with him, but. Well, I th- I think, you know, kind of, I've, been, I've made this comment several different times. It's, it's, and I was the same way with my dream over there. It's like as a little boy, you're dreaming about playing college basketball and professional basketball, but then you like get there and now you're dreaming about being a little boy again, yeah. <laughs> only be a little boy again playing high school basketball. That's right. So really, that's where it is. Good. And, and, so, and it, it's one of the tragedies right now I see with – all of these new teams popping up, like we're playing a game against a kid in high school. And then we're reading something on the internet that he signs a professional contract. He's leaving his high school. He's going to go play and sign a two year deal and play for overtime elite. And he's done. He he just, just left his junior and senior year of high school basketball. I I know. Whoa. You know what I, you know what I've I've learned about that because that blows me away and it I know it does Josh. We grew up in Kentucky and Georgia and we're around Indiana and all that. We're high school basketball rules. What I've found though over the years, and you see it, I know you see it, Shep, traveling the country. In a lot of areas, it's not like that. Mm-hmm. And and 
you know, especially with kids moving around schools year to year to year, the good players. And that's, that's kind of been the erosion of high school basketball over the years in other parts where it's not, not as much as a hot of a hotbed, but man, I, I just, uh, I'm excited for, for what he's got, you know, to come. It's going to be a lot of fun watching him grow. You bring up a good point. I mean, what, what will your teammates have done if you would have said, you know, guys, I think I'm going to go play for Owensboro Catholic next year. I could have never or or anywhere, or, you know, or gone to college, just up and gone to college. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. They well, would have tracked you down, right? Well, you know, I could have never. A, a, I wouldn't have felt kind of, – shoot, a couple of my friends from high school on my high school team, you know, I'm the Vanderpools, they lived with me in the lodge. I was that much of a little kid, you know. Uh, I, I want to switch gears on this for a second because I, I find it – you know, we just talked about it a second ago. People bring it up all the time. I'll see them now. Man, don't you wish the NIL was uh, back? Look, yeah, of course. That wasn't how it was yeah. for you. And and I think you're a very good example of some someone who would have benefited greatly, you know, because your earning power ended up being the, those Kentucky years, right? Yeah. And if you could have, right? So – I guess I don't want to get mired into what you and I could have done. I've been asking Josh and I had Jeff Capel on recently. We've been asking, what are the rules? What are the rules? Let's just say, and I won't say read, yep. let's just say some player, some high level five-star like player, a school, can a school just offer them or not a school, but can they get, can they go somewhere and make $2 million? I think the short answer is yes. I think so too. I really do. Wow. I really How do they have to dress it up? Yeah. I mean, it you can you can package it up kind of however you want to. You right. know, I mean, you know, I, I work for for a business now. And if we wanted to go like super aggressive with some type of a sponsorship deal towards you know, a player, not just a Kentucky, but I mean, pick a state, wow. you know, just anywhere. And that's, what's going to be interesting. You, you know? have to go, you don't, and you don't even have to go through the school, right? No. no. <laughs> wow. Absolutely not. Wow. It, it's, it's just, it's, it is wide open and, you know, it's going to, it's kind of going to be a wild, wild west out there until some structure does get into place. I don't know who's governing this. Yeah, I don't know either. You know, here's here's my here's my question, and I, I we brought it up with Jeff. You know, I'm I'm for it. Obviously, I you know we don't get upset when fraternity and sorority kids are driving their parents' cars around campus. We shouldn't get upset when our players or who they've earned money can drive their cars around campus. I, not about that. I think back though, being 17 and 18 and walking onto Kentucky's campus and thinking if I had, you know, a lot of money and, yeah, like, and like, like $1,000. <laughs> yeah, right. But if I had, if I had, you know, more money than my parents had, yes. you know, if I, I wonder what you know would the incentive still have been as great to become a great player you know to get better than an 18 year old good really good high school player i, I hope the answer to that would be yes the the flip side of that is you know we were lucky to come in and well think about it Shep. if you would have come in as a freshman and had a big nil deal and you didn't get to play much yeah how's that going to weigh on a kid? Yeah. Yeah. And, right. Right. And, and how, how does the locker room dynamic play right. out? Right. So I roll in and because, you know, I'm willing to, to go do this or that um, I can now all of a sudden have a, you know, a really strong NIL deal, but yet my teammate, you know, maybe doesn't. Or vice versa, and and what does that do from the the dynamic uh, in the locker room uh, that carries on to the court, and so all of that is is going to be interesting to see how that plays out. Yeah, 
You know, to go back to what you all were saying too, like, because you said the wild west and it's just, it happens so quickly, the mm -hmm. NIL deal and, and the, there's guidelines, but no rules. And of course, human nature, people are going to take advantage of it. Yeah. Even if they don't think about it, they're going to do all they can to get this player, that player do at what point is, uh, you know, people say Kentucky's, you know, it's a brand and people will, but what point, like, you know, like uh, um, I use Memphis, I'm not trying to, but like they have FedEx there. Mm -hmm. you know, at what point right. does that become a well, FedEx? They'll do a, you can come speak and everyone makes $4 million. And you're like, <laughs> like how yeah. is Silicon Valley, not the brand? You know, you, you start getting into these tech companies out in California. If any of these tech companies tie into these universities and now all of a sudden these companies that are worth billions and billions of dollars that really want to back something and be a part of something. But you know what? I, I, I don't know that that will win a national championship because you still have to have something special to get through the NCAA tournament. And it's very hard. Now, they may prove me wrong, but I think it's very hard to buy a national championship with grabbing talent, grabbing talent, because most of the time in today's world, those players that are that talented that everybody is trying to get anyway are going to be there for one or two years and then they're going to be gone. And that that formula is, is a difficult formula. It can be done, but – my comment has, has kind of always been like the NCAA is not for teenagers. Right. Like some teenagers can really help, but boy, when you get juniors and seniors on an NCAA team and those tough games, they just seem to, to win. Even if the, the talent is, no. is weighted towards the other team. You make it great. Scott drew on here and, yeah. You know, Baylor's the perfect example. And you see yes. people starting to realize and integrate because they were, you know, the, and they grew into a lot of them to be great lottery pick players, uh, but weren't perceived of that at a, at, at a younger stage. But they were a bunch of grown men. I sure were. And, and that makes all the difference, such a difference. I mean, I saw them play here in, in Austin. Uh, the year before last year, and uh, they, they were number one in the country then. But, you know, that's the year we got stopped by COVID. And uh, I was like, God, they are grown men. And then that next year, they were like, well, they, they, they lost one guy. I'm like, all those grown men are coming back. <laughs> back. I was like, this is insane. There's, you can't compete with that. And that seems to be um, – the way the game is starting to, we need a we need a mix of men. I kind of like it. Time. I mean, I really do. You know, I, so miss, I. I miss the days of you know getting getting to know all of your you know getting to know guys that come and you watch them grow up throughout the years. But we saw that last year. You know, for Cal and who's done an unbelievable job with the one and done sort of stuff. Last year, everybody is screwed because of COVID everybody screwed out of preparation for last year mm -hmm. and the years that we're you know really good it always takes us months of preparation and going and going when you can't get that look what we got at the end of the year Baylor and Gonzaga veteran teams it, it, that's who it was going to be it wasn't going to be young kids just thrown together you can't just throw teams together like that and now we see too I think you know we've had a couple of grad transfers the last few years this year at Kentucky I, I think Josh we could have the the most veteran oldest backcourt in the country at, at, at points at points at during points. the season we will have the most experienced veteran backcourt in the history of college basketball like a because fifth year and a sixth year guy a fifth year and a six year. you couldn't be six years <laughs> and these guys played all the time at at, at the other school so yeah. there it's the mo most experienced backcourt in the history of college basketball at points this year that's 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 time. a grown man <laughs> yeah. yeah well yeah i mean i that's that's interesting. You know, my senior year, I was a fifth year senior. That's right. I was I was twenty three years old. 
I was 23 years old. I mean, there's guys like signing their second NBA contract. You were 23, Shep. I went in and I was in the NBA. I turned 20 in training camp my rookie year. Wow. Right. Yeah. And I wasn't at 23. I was I was way less mature than you are. <laughs> yeah, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a, an interesting dynamic to see. And, you know, college basketball, college athletics has has everything's happening so fast. Right. NIL is coming into play you know, the emergence of these professional teams that are grabbing these talented kids away, um, the, the ability to go and like even even what the ball kid did going over and playing overseas for a year and then entering the draft. And yeah. what stinks is, is, you know, college basketball is special. And I just hope that all of this noise around it doesn't take away from just how special it is. I'm with well, I hope you. it enhances it. And I'm glad that the guys are getting some money for their name and their image and their likeness. But I, I just hope that the locker room doesn't turn professional. You know what you. I mean, Rex? Yeah. Like that locker room is like, I don't think I'm going to practice today right. because I got just a little bit of a bump here. Yeah. And you know, mm-hmm. my contract's coming up next year. I just hope that that doesn't get into the college locker room. Now, these college coaches, you know, are, are, are different, you know, animals too. They yeah. they won't put up with a lot of that. But you got the transfer portal, and now these guys are saying, you know, it's just a crazy dynamic that it's going to be interesting to see how they handle it. I want to ask a couple more and then uh, we'll let you get going um, for people that don't know. And most do that would be listening. Probably your wife, Stacy, was a terrific point guard at the university of Kentucky. Um, just from a recruiting standpoint, what, what do you guys, what do you want for Reed? Um, man, I don't mean to discount Madison. Who's a yeah. senior at <laughs> Campbellsville, uh, Campbellsville, right? Campbellsville. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. No, what do you guys want for Reed's college experience? You know, it's interesting you bring Madison into that question because we really have done this as a family. Like when when Coach Cal came down, like it was Reed, Stacy, Jeff, and Madison. Like Madison drove from school. Oh, that's sweet. Yes. And like she had her questions. She was like, hey, I got some questions, Coach. You know, and, and wow. it's just – and, and so, you know, she's you asking, cry. like, what are you going to do for my brother outside of basketball? <laughs> uh, I love all this basketball talk, but, you know, are you going to be there outside of basketball? And so, you know, for Reed, he, he, he's our son, right? He's always been our son. We, we, we love him unconditionally, and we just want him to, you know, continue to develop, of course, as a basketball player, but as a young man as well. Because at some point, it's going to end. Hopefully, he has a really, really long run through this sport. But at some point, he needs to be prepared to be a man. He needs to be prepared to be a father. He needs to be prepared to be a husband. He just needs to be prepared to be a leader because that's, that's what we're looking for. And thankfully, we could just about close our eyes and pick one of the schools that he's talking to, and he's in great hands. Mm-hmm. So incredible elite leaders are going to be able to pour into his life. So at this point, it's just a matter of what's the best fit. Where do you feel like you, you know, you connect with the players? Mm-hmm. Um and there's some little things, you know, we're looking at all kinds of things, you know, the style of play and all of that. But all yes. of that's my, minor in regards to read what, what's important to you. What are you feeling? Let's follow that. And we're behind you 100 percent, no matter what decision you make. If if you want to play at Kentucky, we're wearing Kentucky. If you want to play at Louisville. We're wearing Louisville, and I'll deal with all of the the yeah. whatever that brings. It won't matter because you're our son. It's and Louisville. He said it second. He would have said Louisville. He would have said Kentucky first. It's Louisville, isn't it? 
<laughs> careful, I don't know. careful. I, I really don't know. I really don't know. He, he really likes Virginia. He really likes. Oh, Kentucky. I love Virginia too. Love Tony Virginia. Bennett. What a what a great leader. I mean, I, I'm a big Tony Bennett fan, and but I'm not a big Virginia fan. School's too hard. Gonna have to go too much. <laughs> too much. Just let him know too much. I'll let him know. But Chris hey. Chris Mack has done an incredible job from a, a recruitment standpoint. All of these coaches have, you know, and and, yeah. and we're just going to keep going through the process. You know, we're gonna we're gonna go watch practices, and we're gonna go on official visits, and you know. It, the, these, they're doing a really good job calling and talking to them, but not wearing them out either. When is the time? When, I don't even know how it is anymore, Shep. It, when is the normal time or is there a time where he, you know, you guys are like, you know, get this over with. Is, is that before a season? Is it after? I don't even know how it's done now. Yeah. So, so right now he hasn't taken any official visits, but he can start kind of scheduling some official visits. Uh, we've done some unofficial and, you know, he's kind of, you know, he's just going to be a junior man. Right? He's, gonna junior. he's just going to be a junior. Did you so take any visits before you were a senior? No. See, everything really cranked up for me Same. after the next summer. So after okay. the summer of my junior year, that's when everything really, really picked up. And, and so for him, you know, the, the trial earlier, part, this year was great because we played up and we played at a really high level. We played for on the Adidas three SSB circuit and he played out of Cincinnati, had a really good team, had a really good season. And he was playing against, you know, the, the 17 U's. So he got evaluated kind of in the next class and that really gave him an advantage. And, and we wanted to know, you know, he wanted to know, and I wanted to know where, where are you, man? Are you really one of the better players? Or? You know how much, you know how, how tough that is though, Chef. Yeah. Like, I, I, you remember being that age. I remember being that age and it's daunting. Also yeah. it's so telling of his mindset because like, like Cal says, you know, stuff's not for everybody. Right. And, and I remember wanting to know how I stacked up against the guy I've been reading about two states over. I wanted to know that. And it sounds like he certainly does, too. He does. He, yeah. he, he, he does. And, and, and you get tested. I mean, the, the travel circuit is, is awesome. You can't hide. You can't hide. But yeah. it's heavy, man. I mean, we rolled into Birmingham, Alabama after playing in empty gyms for a year and a half. And we roll in and there's. 75 coaches over there, wow. you know, and I'm, I'm like trying to help, you yeah. know, I'm not the head coach, but I'm trying to, but then I got like one eye on there. I'm like, you know, Reed makes an assist and I'm like trying to get like everybody's yeah. you know, <laughs> facial expression and, and you know, grab all that in and be like, no, yeah. and I'm trying to keep it cool too, yeah. right? You know, I'm like, not I want to jump up and be like, yeah, Reed, that's my boy. And then I'm like, you know, I got to gotta keep it cool, you know, and I got to right. well, it's brutal over there. I right? know, it is. Yeah, I bet you just, you know, he makes a great assist. You want to say, did you see that? Yeah. Did you see? Uh -huh. He's a great passer. Yeah, makes a turnover and, and you you kind of point up Stacy like, yeah, that was her. yeah, it was her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like yelling at my big guy, like catch the ball, man. I mean, <laughs> I'll just play. You, you miss it. <laughs> uh, hey, Jeff, Jeff, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask something like this because you played for two all timers uh, coaches, both won national championships with you. Wow, and they are really different men. Mm -hmm. What do you? One thing. What's one thing you learned from Rick? And one thing you learned from Tubby. What, what's the most important lesson you learned from each of them? Ooh, we could do a whole show on that. Uh, okay. I'll pick, I'll pick one. <laughs> I'll pick one from Coach Patino. I would say the importance of, of preparation. Um, you know, Coach, some of his best speeches were like in, in the locker room right before we went out to practice. And then we were so prepared for the opponent, for the game. He was just a master in, in breaking down an opponent and preparing. So just 
the ability to be prepared for what is next for you. With Coach Smith, man, it is it is simple. It is, you know, develop relationships with everybody that you come in contact with. I mean, I saw Coach Smith through one season, like introduce himself like everybody, nobody needed to know. He's like introducing himself to the people at the scores table, shaking their hands before the games, like the clock operator at Tennessee. He's like, hey, Tubby Smith. Hey, Tubby. I mean, I'm like, you're Tubby Smith. Why are you introducing yourself yeah. to these people? But he made their day. So like people come around in Kentucky and they're like, hey, man, I, I was walking through campus one day. And I was I was by myself and, you know, I'm I'm a I'm a female on campus and Coach Smith's like, why are you walking through campus by yourself here? I'm going to walk you on these stories about coach just paying attention to every single person is just a life lesson I'll never forget. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Beautiful. Chef, uh, what's your favorite movie? Hoosiers is my favorite movie. No way. Could have never guessed. <laughs> Chef Kidwood. <laughs> Gladiators, gladiators catches. The older I get, you know, gladiators. Okay. My, my that's my jam now. But you know, Hoosiers, I gotta, I gotta default right. to, to Jimmy Chitwood. You know, he, he that's my guy right there. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> what about front center, uh, center, front rows, right in the center to see any performer or speaker or someone from history, just you right there, dead or alive? Who? Wow. You're alive. I'm alive. No, Shep's oh. alive for this. He can see. Yeah, it. I'm alive. Oh. I just yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're dead, and then they can speak. <laughs> Thanks for who would you want up, to Brad. see you? Uh, <laughs> dead. dead. Wow. 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 Oh gosh, a lot of lot of thoughts there. A um, lot of thoughts. A lot of biblical characters okay. that come to mind. Um, you know, a lot of lot of leaders. You okay. know. That 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 come to mind. Uh, of course, you know, kind of Jesus kind of leading the way. There you go. But, but even, heard of him. You know, yeah. Even even you know you know guys like Moses that you know had to just deal with with so many people complaining and you know just kind of hearing his take on here's how you deal with two million people that you know don't want to cooperate. So you know, and then all kinds of coaches. You know, I, I never. I never, I saw John Wooden as he was getting older. I never really got to, to, to hear, you know, him really present and, you know, yeah. hear so many things about him, you know, so many different, you know, coaches that, that come to mind as well. Amazing. Chef, I, I can't thank you enough for doing this. And I want to say it to you, uh, be sure that I say it publicly there. I've been associated and, closely associated with the school over at UK for shoot, gosh, man, 80 since mid eighties. So 35, six years now, two people have come through the program that I just, I can't believe that they're real people. They're so good. You and Emmanuel quickly, uh, <laughs> two of the <laughs> finest, most grounded people that I've ever come across. Even at 18 years old, you had a head on you like you have on you now. And uh, I'm, I'm proud as I can be to call you a friend and excited for what's, uh, what's going on in your family and, and for what, what lies ahead for Reed. So thanks, buddy. Thank you, Rex. It means a yeah, lot. And, I and Jeff, it. I just want to say, just from hearing your story on here, how amazing, you know, the, your basketball journey through Kentucky. And now that you live in Kentucky, it's like to write that paper in sixth grade and say you want to come, to work that hard, to then come to Kentucky. Uh, win two national championships, uh, uh, most outstanding player in a in a in the NCAA tournament, and then you meet your wife, who's mm -hmm. another great basketball player, and fall in love and and uh, have a family and and move and stay in Kentucky, and then you have this son who's definitely going to Kentucky for sure, and that's <laughs> it. So that's so perfect. So that's, 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 that's it's it. a great story, and then he's going to win the championship. It's perfect. Okay, bye. Thanks. Yeah, <laughs> oh, boy, that was great. Yeah, yeah. Gosh, what did it need? And, a great guy. Yeah, <laughs> and Reed's going to Kentucky. How about that? Yep, not oh, for wow. sure. No oh, doubt. Wow. 
I don't want to put that pressure on you, but blink, blink if he is. <laughs> you don't he did. He, he did. He blinked. He blinked. He blinked. <laughs> you don't have to put the pressure. It's it's there. I know. Uh, yeah. It, it's a lot of fun, and it's one of the things that makes it difficult because you know I'm not a guy that's like, hey, I'm looking for a sign, and it's a good thing because. Like everybody I talk to is saying, Reed's going to Kentucky, right? Reed's going to Kentucky, right? Yeah. So it it, it, right. it does make it hard, but it makes it so much fun. It, it really you, does. Have you ever watched my uh have you ever watched my stupid announcement to go to Kentucky? You probably oh, have. It. Well I gotta watch it. Well, yeah. Sweet the, fake glasses. I've seen it a hundred. Fake glasses, times. gold chain, <laughs> sweater. Uh, mullet. It was, I was dope. Forget about that. I was dope, but, uh, no, I, I, it was, I was going to Louisville for, you know, until right at the end, but there became a, you know, it was Kentucky or Louisville in people's minds. And really, I guess in my mind, but at the, at the, uh, announcement, you know, I announced Kentucky and the room, you know, there were hundreds of people in there and the room erupted in, in a cheer and it kind of startled me and you could see on my face, I was kind of like, and then I went, Oh, they're happy. I can't imagine what, if I'd have said Louisville, like, were they, would they have booed me? <laughs> <laughs> it's me yeah. Right. So I mean, I'm it was, I never, I, I guess I didn't realize, and I grew up here. I didn't realize how many people really, you know, they didn't voice it to me, but in retrospect, they were so many were rooting for Kentucky, but I didn't really understand that. And I grew up living here. So I hope Reed understands it. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it, it's, it's, it's around him, but like I said earlier, we just want him to be at North Laurel this year yeah. and, and enjoy it. And, and it's, it, you, you can't ignore it. it it's, right. It's there, and he doesn't need to ignore it. It, yeah. it he needs to, to enjoy stuff. it, be a part of it. But it also it also can't consume, and and so that's that's our job as parents, and yep. it's the job of our head coach, and you know, and hopefully the the fans will cooperate. I mean, they, they probably will. won't. <laughs> they will. It's okay. Uh, I've always said it, it. It's all okay. It's what makes this place so special. If if, if that didn't exist, it wouldn't be Kentucky basketball. Right. That's right. Wow. Great so, perspective. He's, he's a lucky guy to have, you know, you with all your knowledge of, and, mm -hmm. and the person you are, you know, shepherding him, <laughs> pun intended, ah. you know, uh, shepherding him through this process um, and making sure he appreciates it. And, and I, I'm surprised to hear you say, you know, in a lovely way, you know, the pressure, embrace the pressure, see yeah. it, enjoy what's happening because it's very unique to anyone. And, and the fact that's not just, you know, do your thing, drown it out. It's there. So to, to, to embrace it, that's what great advice, man. It's was. there. It's there. And if like Jeff said earlier, you know, hopefully he'll have a long career in bat or playing the game of basketball, a long journey. Well, guess what? It's pressure all the time, every day. And the earlier you embrace that, the earlier you, you, you'll uh, be on that track to success because it is. It, it, you got to repeat what you just did every day. You got to be that good. And once you, once you go out there and show them 50, they want to see 50 every night, right? That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Jeff, thanks so much, buddy. Hey, uh, yes. We won't keep you any longer. You got to come back and do this. Come back during the season. Let's talk we'll some more it. basketball. We'll do it. All right, bud. A lot of fun, guys. Appreciate thanks, man. It. Thank you so much. All right. Josh, that's, that's Jeff Shepard in a suit and tie the whole time. I mean, what a good dude, right? What a good uh, um, Continues in the theme of making us feel You're terrible right. about us. I know. Oh, what a great guy. I, it was so such a, a weird existence here when he got to school and I, I was probably, you know, I was I, I think I'm four or five years older, maybe than Chef. Is it? It's not more than that, is it? He said he was born in 74. 74. OK, six, six or seven years. Right, right. So. But when he got here and I'm kind of helping him every day, I'm in there trying to bust his ass playing, you know, just in a nice way. And 
Yeah. So. Just to make him compete. And, and you could tell he was going to be really good, but there was a, there was a part of Shep that was too nice at first, right. you know, right. it was too nice. And so I'm working with him on basketball. And if the second the, the topic changes to anything else, I feel like I'm learning from Shep. Wow. At 25 wow. years old, you know, wow. uh, he's telling me something that I don't know, something about the world, something about politics at, at a young age. And wow, so, that's a- and he's still, he, you can tell he just, he, he was made for success. Yeah. It, he's a worker. It, it, I almost just wanted to go, have you Ow. ever, ever done anything wrong? Like, I know, that, you know, it's we should have asked him that. We'll ask him that next time. Yeah. The worst thing you've ever done. Did you ever play <laughs> spin the bottle? Did you ever do yeah. anything? <laughs> yeah. No, no. Nope. I was practicing. No, I heard about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, what a good dude. All right. Well, man, uh, it's good to get back on the on the saddle. We hadn't had one in a, in a week or two. Um, yep, here we go. You've had some had some goings on, Rex, yeah, and now yeah. here we are. We're getting ready to you know get kick back into this thing. This felt good. It felt fun. Absolutely. All right, that's episode twenty five. Uh, catch us next time for F twenty six of the Rex Chapman Show with Super Cool Josh Hopkins on BasketballNews.com. Powered by basketballnews.com. Rate and review. And subscribe. Five stars. Subscribe. Now. There we go.